I have been using Google Calendar for as long as I can remember, but there are so many small things that irritate me, it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts. As an independent researcher and content creator, I work on multiple projects at once, so a calendar is kind of like a necessary evil. And these six things are what I went looking for to help me out, which in my case led me to Morgan. That's using these assumptions first. You don't need to switch calendars, so it can be Google, it could be Outlook, it could be iCal, it could be a combination. It needs to work on all devices, whether it's PC, Mac, Linux, iPad, tablet, phone, Android. It just doesn't matter, and it's all for free. Ideally, with the ability to mix and match calendars, so maybe a uni calendar on Outlook, but your personal calendar on Google. Morgan has that on their first pay tier, but you can just sync the calendars, so sync your Outlook calendar with Google, then move the Google calendar into Morgan, and you're all good. That's what I would advise which keeps it all free, a kind of a no-brainer for students, or you could use the 25% discount Morgan offer for students and educators to get that pro plan if you have more than one account you want to connect. Now, the first thing I went looking for is a quick view because Google Calendar is always in a tab and you have to move around to the tab. But see, I'm just global hotkey. It's so quick to bring up Morgan and close down Morgan. It, it's just fast. And speaking of hotkeys, when you do bring it up, let's just make it full screen. You've got the week, the day view, the two weeks view, the month view. It really doesn't matter. You can see it all. It's fast. It's quick. Let's go to the day. You can go backwards with arrows, forwards with arrows. It's, it's just easy to navigate. Now, this is my one year anniversary of using Morgan. So I do have a bit of bias towards that. And I'm not familiar with all the other calendar apps out there because <laughs> there are loads of them so I can't speak to their features but I can speak to Morgan and these are the features I look for when I'm comparing other calendar apps. The next point is easy editing and Google Calendar moving all day events down or moving events back in time with the arrows. It, these are those small things. Yes, you can do the, the drag in and the, the backwards and forwards of all the events, which you can do in most new calendar apps. Uh, there's a hotkey for this, so you can push C and that creates another event as well. If you create something in the all day, so let's just click in there. Now we've blocked out some time, we'll save that. I can drag this from the all day down into the day or drag it from the day up into the all day. It's, it's just quick and easy to add and edit things. But when you're in the edit window, you can see under the repeat, there's actually natural language dates. So if I want to say every two weeks, I can type in every two weeks. You can see it's now repeating weekly every two. And then I can say every two weeks on Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. I can type that in if I want or I can push the buttons. Or you can use the global hotkey, which for me is control shift K. And this brings up this window where I can now use natural language input. So I can type in tomorrow at 7 p.m. And you can see I can save it as an event and it's automatically picked Thursday at 7 p.m. And then I'm going to say do things. So now when I push enter or save the event, it's created the event do thing at 7 p.m. tomorrow. And this is the command bar. So if you want to go straight in, you can go into the command bar and now you get these options and you'll notice at the bottom there are tips. So you can select the calendar using the slash. Select whatever calendar you have inside of Morgan. You want to add an attendee, push the at symbol. Add a location, colon. And you can also tag events. So I can push a hash and then use any of my tags, which you can see I actually use as statuses for my project management. If I come down to the preferences, I'm going to click on my icon face and then go to preferences. You can see inside of here, we have the calendar section, which is where I have my one personal account, which is free. And then I have all the other calendars that I have linked. So some of these are other people's calendars, the people that I've worked with. Some of them are family, some of them are mine. It's entirely up to me, but it's all coming in from this one Google account. So if I want to search for an event, maybe in someone else's calendar, a co-worker's calendar, a family calendar, I can search. And now I'm searching for do thing. In the future, there is the event that I've just created. If I go to the past, there is, oh, apparently there's a couple of things where I said do thing in the past. And this moves me on nicely to customization. You may notice my calendar actually starts at six o'clock in the morning, not at midnight, because I don't need to see what happens when I'm asleep. So when I'm in preferences, I can say, OK, time grid, let's start at six o'clock and then go to midnight. But if you're awake at different times, maybe you're a bit of a night owl and you want to see two in the morning, then you can change that. You can then change the resolution. So I want to see 30 minute blocks because that's what I typically block in. But maybe you want to be 15 minutes or one hour. It's entirely up to you. It's custom. 
This customization is it's so simple, but Google just annoyed me so much. They limit it to, what is it, three or four? Here I can have as many events as I want in the all day, so I don't have to click the more button, the four more, the five more, no, which makes project management in Morgan really easy, which you can see up at the top of my calendar. So at the moment, I'm in the week view, and if we go into the week, you can change it by clicking. I, I never click things. There are custom days, so control and then a number. So if I push control three, gives me three days days control five gives me five days d takes me back to the day t takes me back to today so if i come into here there are the hotkeys for that but you can show or hide weekends widen the current day so if i'm in the week view by pushing w you can see today is slightly wider it's also got the red dot uh, on the current day i can dim the past events so at the moment you can see they are dimmed out because they're in the past i don't need them and they are brighter but it's a custom option which you can turn on or off Show completed tasks, tasks I'll get to a little bit later, but you can show or hide completed tasks and you'll notice I use a lot of tasks in my personal calendar. You can show or hide declined events, so events that you said, no, I'm not going there. You can hide them because Google Calendar keeps them on there for some reason, or they did when I last used it. And it was, it was just clustering up my calendar and I was like, I don't want to see that. So I turn them off and because I work with other people, they share their calendar with me if we have the same event. So for example, this call yesterday was a podcast call and the recording, their event had the same name as my event. So you can see it's now merged the colors. Theirs is a lighter orange, mine's a darker orange and it's merged the event together because they've got the same name and it it's just nice and easy. And I need you to see my face for this one, but calendar sets, oh, going into Google Calendar and having to turn off and turn on the different calendars that you want was, ah, it was so annoying. <laughs> but the way Morgan does it is you can use a hotkey for it. So you can set certain calendars, push one, show them all and hide the others. Push two, show this set and not the rest. So as a practical example, when I'm in here, if I push one on my keyboard, nothing's changed because I'm in calendar set one. If I push Two, it goes to other people I work with and their calendars. I have removed some of the other things for privacy reasons, of course. And then if I push three, it hides most of that stuff and just shows planning. If I go to zero, it's going to show me every single calendar, which <laughs> looks like a complete mess. So if I go to the calendar at the top, I can then add a calendar to a set. So maybe you have a work set or a personal set or a home set or a family set, and you can click on them and add any number to them. So you can have 10 sets which could sound confusing, but if you come into the calendars, you can see all the different calendars. These names aren't actually the same names as what's in my Google Calendar, because when you click on the three dots, you can change it. So this is private, even though it's not actually called private in my Google Calendar. And you can actually change the colors of the calendars inside of Morgan as well. And it gives you a lovely color picker as well to pick any color that you want, you're not limited, which is the same for the tasks. So if I click on any of these events at the top, I double click, I can then click on the task, I can change the name of the task and pick any color. Now that I've removed the tag, you can see the color has gone back to red. And that's because the event is in my calendar, that's the red calendar, which is the DH main channel, which is the channel you're watching this video on, or I can change the calendar to anything else, which will change the color of the event. But when I add the tag, so I'm working on the video right now, it goes to yellow. You can see this James behind the scenes video is done. So it's green, but there's a little red dot. So I know which channel it goes on, which brings me to tasks. I've used note taking apps for tasks like Notion, Obsidian, Ample Note, and insert the rest of them. I've also used dedicated task managers like Todoist and TickTick and Microsoft To Do and Google Tasks, but they're all separate apps. And I find myself looking at my calendar, then having to go to my task manager, wherever it was, and then go backwards and forwards. I, I just wanted them together. Todoist was the best until I found Morgan. It is worth mentioning there are task integrations on the first tier plan, on the paid plus plan. Uh, so to do is Google Tasks, Microsoft To Do and Outlook. They are all tasks that you can see inside of Morgan. So when I'm in my calendar, I push space and it brings up all my tasks. You can see Google Tasks is there and to do is there. So it does show them all and you can bring them on the calendar. But Morgan Tasks do all you really need. It's got a priority on there. It's got the calendar that it would go on to. You can repeat again with natural language dates, add notes into the tasks. And if you want, you can add subtasks. You can see this learning with YouTube is a subtask of this one at the top. 
So I've got subtasks, I've got main tasks, I've got a due date if I want to add a due date that goes into the overdue sections. So all the core stuff you would need in tasks is there, but you can drag them around and do what you want with them because they are treated just like events. So let's say I want to add a task in for tomorrow. I can actually, because it creates an event automatically, I can just type task space and now you can see it's moved over to a task rather than the event so i can move it back to task and then type in my task and we're all good to go however if we look in the preferences the tasks are events so they show up on other people's calendars they could be busy or free so the task can also be seen by others that don't use morgan as an event to see if you're busy or not in that time the visibility can be public or private and then you can default calendar the task i have my task go to automatic so it selects the last calendar i was using so when i batch add tasks it goes to the same calendar but for events i add it in my tasks calendar and this may get confusing so if we have a look at the task it's inside my dh channel calendar the calendar that's on google this is my tasks calendar that's on google but this task is inside of my main channel task list which you can see is inside of morgan and that is what the two colors are the outline color is the task list and then the big thick color is the calendar so this is blue because it's in my task calendar but it's purple because it's in my sub stack task list and this is yellow because it's in my second channel calendar but it is also yellow on the outline because it's in my video essay task list. At the end of the day, all I wanted was tasks inside of my calendar and Morgan gives me that and more because I've got subtasks, I have task lists, it works on my phone so I can add things in there. But because it's in Morgan, it also works with a command bar so you can see I can then add it to a task list, add a priority to it, all from this quick menu, which again is the hotkey, control shift K for me, so do thing. Tomorrow, then I save it as a task, and let's actually add this to my notes task list. So there, let's say it's high priority, and let's just add it to my tasks calendar just to prove that you can do it, and then go enter, and that's all been done from the keyboard. And for those that can't see it because it's a bit of a mess, it's, it's, it's here. If I then want to delete the task, uh, double click, this delete button doesn't delete the task, it unschedules it. So if I click this, it then goes whoop into the sidebar, do thing. Uh, and then I can delete it from here, which then deletes the actual task. So don't worry about deleting it from the calendar. That's just an unscheduled bit. So feel safe there. Yeah, I know I've spelt scheduling wrong, but I'm going to leave it there because I can't be bothered to change it. Now, I know as a student, when I saw scheduling links, I'm like, why do I need that? I'm not a consultant. I'm not a freelancer. I don't need to book a web call or anything like that. But when you're sending a link to someone to say, hey, can we meet up at this time? Instead of going backwards and forwards, Morgan just gives you that option. I've cleared up my calendar for this example, but when I was trying to work out when to have the committee meeting for the football team, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do it then. Wait a minute, no, they might not be available. So I click on the open invite button and now it says, okay, this is the available time. That's an available time. This one, this one, let's just say this one as well. And now I can copy all of this, send it in WhatsApp, or I can just create the link and then people can book a time with me then so everyone can come in and be like oh yeah that time works for me and then they can book links and we can sort it out that way i actually found when multiple people uh, are going into the meeting just sending this into a whatsapp message and people just thumbing up or responding quicker but for one person or two people this this link was so much easier than going backwards and forwards in a whatsapp group <laughs> And just for clarity, if you go to the left sidebar, the second option, this is where all the open invites are. So you can show the booked. These are just two open invites I've sent out previously. And if you are a consultant and you do need to send out recurring links, then there's that option inside of the booking page, which you can see I use here, which directly relates to the web conferencing tools that you can use. So Zoom, Teams, Google Meets, all that stuff that you would expect. So when you create an event, you can add your Zoom link or it creates a new one for you. This one, you've got the link at the top here. And when the event starts, you get a push notification that says, hey, join meeting, which it, it just makes life easy. And Google Calendar doesn't do that as well as Morgan from my experience, which is where automation starts to become part of this conversation. I'm personally not a big AI guy and I don't like many things automating what it is that I do because I like to be in control. I like to be able to do it myself. However, 
Time 2, which is being developed by the Morgan team as well, have added some features that I thought, oh yeah, I'm not going to use that, but they've added some options and I'm like, that just makes sense. So when you add a location inside of uh, an event, I need to be there, Time 2 adds the travel time, automatically calculated through Google Maps. And this automated travel time is the main one that I use, especially when I'm going to conferences. I'm like, how long is it going to take me to get there by train and public transport? And so this just works it out for me. So it is very convenient. However, calendar propagation. So if you have a work calendar and a personal calendar, you want to sync. This does it for you. Focus time. It helps you move things around so it doesn't block your time if you're working with multiple team members. So there's no overlapping events. So you don't double book yourself, which is nice. Um, and then meeting assistant. So this integrates with Slack, giving you, hey, a notification. There's there's no agenda for this meeting and there's more coming as well, which is really nice to see. So even though I'm not looking or want automation, it's an upgrade to my calendar that is just simple and easy to use, which is why I'm using Time2. This is currently an alpha at the moment, but other apps that do similar things is what I'm looking for. So if you know any more, let me know in the comment section below. But I don't know of any way Google Calendar or Outlook or anything like that does this. So for me, again, Morgan slash Time2, the, the company developing them, it just... It, it's helping my time management. This may come across like an ad, but they're not paying me to say this. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't work for them in any way. All I do is help them out in the Discord community because I'm interested in time management conversations. Do you use a due date or a due date? And how do you manage your tasks to events? Those sorts of conversations, which we have in the Discord. That's exciting to me. And yes, I'm biased towards using this app because I've been using it for a year and it just works. I don't have to faff or worry about it and Google Calendar is in the background. So even if Morgan does break, which it hasn't in my experience, Google Calendar is still in the background. So it's not like, oh no, I'm selling my soul to this app. It, it just works. And as it does everything Google does plus more, with it being free, it kind of makes no sense not to try it out. So I've left my affiliate link in the description below. So yes, I get a commission if you start paying on that, but that's it.